So you see this um, final section is uh, all about uh, actually artificial intelligence, as I told you uh, in the introductory speech that um, it's impossible now to make modern products, uh, products with a good future without using one uh, artificial intelligence in them in one way or another. And also I kept saying that in artificial intelligence and machine learning are so universal, are uh, so fundamental that they can be used, the same algorithms, the same approaches can be used not only inside Yandex products, which are mass products for millions of users, tens, hundreds of millions of users, but in really diverse areas from industry to art. We start with industry. Jane, please come on stage. And Jane, uh, the head of Yandex Data Factory, will tell you the pow about the power of invisible AI. Yeah, it kind of stays invisible. Uh, we try to make it more visible. We'll see how successful I am in it tonight. So, yes, you've already heard a lot about this uh, fantastic technologies which are empowering pretty much all the Yandex solutions. Uh, and I would now <coughs> would like to take a wider view on how these technologies can change not just sales and marketing, but, well, basically, world as we know it. So, data is a new oil. Everyone knows that. We live in the age of data. Who owns the data owns the world. That's all obvious. The problem is most of the companies don't really realize that when we have the data growth at such a rate, when you have such a huge amount of data, you actually, it's not just about quantity. You actually need to change your ways of working with this data of, to get value out of it. Most of people, when they think about using data to improve their business, they mostly are thinking about insights. They imagine something like this, right? Because we have all this data, we now can know so much more about everything happening with our business, with our customers. We can go into the deepest details. The problem is that very often it leads us to this. Right? Because we are humans, right? And dealing with such amounts of data, we actually struggle. That's really hard to do. And it's not very often we are able to really efficiently use this data to improve our business. And that's why we need these new approaches. But how exactly these approaches look like? Let me show you. So historically, pretty much up until the last years, our main way of using data was like this. So we gathered all the data we could about what happens in the world, what happens in our business, what happens in our, with our customers, our technological processes, whatever. We made our knowledge, our insights about it, and based on that, we were making the decisions. Well, first of all, of course, strategic decisions. And then, based on that, we put some operational rules in practice, so now people who are making operational decisions, day-to-day -day decisions, routine ones, they would basically look at the general rules and try and do their best to implement them. That's how it looked, more or less. Now, what is different today? Let me give you one example from the industry probably no one here knows anything about. It's dairy industry. Okay, look at the, these two pictures. You see very typical landscapes. For Israel, it's desert. And New Zealand, right, it's green paradise. So just guess where the cows are producing more milk. Yeah, you probably already guessed that there is a catch, right? It's not just more. It's actually three times more milk produced in Israel per cow. How could that happen? And again, the smartest of you already guessed the answer, right? It's about using data in the right way. But how, how do they use this data? What does it do? Right? Do they build 360 degree view on a cow, maybe? Or maybe they're building some analytics on milking journey? No. What they do is totally different. They're actually not using this data 
and they gather this data from the cows. You see those sensors on the, on the cows, which um, allow you to have all the information about how the cow moves and how it basically feels. But they do not use them to derive insights. This data is used to act on that directly. Right? So if you know right now from this sensor data, and you can analyze them in the real time, and you can see that this cow is actually best being milked right now, and you do that, that's exactly what you have. Or maybe it's time to have a mate. Uh, that's exactly what you get. You have, just by milking the right cow at the right time, you are getting more milk and happier cows. Right? And actually, the same works for your customers. It works absolutely the same way. <laughs> but to do that, to be able to do that, uh, well, and actually, it's not just with the customers. You will see the examples. It even works with metallurgy. Anyway, to be able to do that, we need to push our analytics, or automation, if you like, to this execution level. That's where our modern technologies working with the data should work to improve the operational efficiency. It basically allows us to eliminate this human part of the process in operational decisions. So when we don't have a human as a bottleneck, That's McKinsey also agree with me, you see? Um, it's actually a funny one, funny quote, because just three years ago, no one knew what machine learning is. And then, bam, in 2015, McKinsey issues and publishes an executive guide to machine learning. Now, I should say, we, again, almost forgetting these words, because nowadays, globally, it's usually called artificial intelligence. All these technologies we are talking about um, around machine learning called artificial intelligence, and you see they also think that in so many routine work, in so many routine decisions, using humans is simply impractical. And they were saying becoming, because it was 2015, it already became in many places, because it's 2017 now. But the problem is that most businesses, they actually don't realize what we mean when we say artificial intelligence and making decisions and so on. Because what people usually imagine when they hear artificial intelligence, they imagine something, oh, some pictures, right? That's how we think. You've just heard that before, right? It should be visual, it should be emotional. So we think in pictures. We maybe imagine self-driving cars. Or maybe we think about a computer which is now able to win in this very complex game Go, which we thought before was impossible. Or maybe, if you are more on the paranoid side, you may be imagining some, you know, robot overlords taking, <laughs> taking over the world. The truth is that, in fact, you already deal with AI all the time. Right? I often, when I speak to the, to the business audience and industrial audience, I often ask people, How do you, what do you think? Did you use AI today? And most of people, of course, would answer no, while they are totally wrong. Because, of course, they have, right? If they searched, as you already heard today, that was AI taking care of their searches, personalizing the search results for them, choosing the most relevant advertising for them. And they just don't realize that, right? This AI kind of stays invisible because it doesn't produce beautiful pictures. When they check email where all the spam is carefully filtered into the drive folder, it's AI taking care of you all the time, right? Even when you sleep. And of course, shopping, marketing, you already heard all that today. But what is the most interesting part for me is that all these algorithms, which basically were, well, not born, but they developed and matured and flourished in the internet, are now available for all the other industries, all the other types of businesses to use. And in fact, there are so many tasks which are very similar, well, at least from a mathematical point of view, and you need to understand this view, uh, very similar to what we do in the internet with these algorithms. Why it's important? Because you can use something which is already, well, it's already mature, it's already well known how to use it, and you can apply it to your day-to-day -day tasks very quickly. Basically, most of the examples I will be uh, talking about later, they are accomplished within a few months, producing real measurable value after this few months. But to be able to do that, you need to know where to look. What are those tasks? What are their characteristics? What are those tasks in your business where you would really like to apply AI to? It's actually quite simple, three parts. 
First, you would like to look at the established and repetitive process within your business. Because that's where you have enough data and enough feedback for AI to learn from it, right? So it can basically analyze what happened before and build the best prediction about what will happen in the future and make the best decisions on it. And then that's actually often it's the most important part because <laughs> surprisingly, we humans are not that good in setting goals. And because AI will replace us in these routine decisions, if we want to stay in the game, that's what we need to learn how to do. We need to be very, very good in setting goals in measurable terms, very specific measurable metrics, as close to real value, real money, as possible. So if you have this repetitive process and you know exactly what you want to optimize, you want to improve, the only last thing you need to look for is uncertainty because that's where and how the value is being created by AI. Here's the thing, if you know exactly what happens, you don't really need any prediction or any smart machine, right? You can go with just simple rules. If A, do B, as simple as that. But what happens if you don't know? And it seems that there are so many places like this when we have enough uncertainty in inputs, we have very specific KPIs to improve, and we have this established repetitive process. And they are not limited to, uh, well, B2C industries. Actually, I would like to start with this example, just because it's the most different one. The thing is that the very same algorithm, you've already heard about MatrixNet, the very same algorithm that won uh, rec recommending system challenge first prize for e-commerce recommendations, also did this. It optimized Still making. And because I guess most of you have no idea what steel making industry is, and you are probably now looking at these numbers and thinking, okay, she started this revolution and now we look at 5%. What is it about? Right? It doesn't look revolutionary. Believe me, it is. Right? Because with steel making, we are talking about the industry with a profit margin of like 7% in a good year. Right? So if you are cutting your costs 5%, it's huge. And another thing about this industry is that, yes, just as I described before, they have very established processes, right? We are making steel for hundreds of years, and it's a very conservative process. Very often, they have very old equipment. So if you are a steel maker and you want to improve your processes, you want to be more efficient, how do you do that? Well, I'll answer you. Usually what would you do, you would spend hundreds of millions of dollars for new equipment, right? Which also need to be built employed, you need to train your personnel, so it takes like three to five years. And after that, yes, you may have this kind of savings. And well, you will even have ROI in 10 years. What you can have instead of that, if you use AI, you use all the past data from your steel making, because there is a lot of uncertainty there. When you're making steel, you start with scrap metal, and you have no idea what scrap metal composition is. And that's why you usually have this human, this experienced operator, who is making the decision about how much of additives improving the quality of steel they need to put in process. And it seems that if you ask algorithm, it's just more accurate. It's just much better in understanding what happens right now in your steel mixture and what you need to do. Of course, it's not just for, for steel, right? The same way it works, for example, for retail. They also have the processes which are very conservative because they are at the very core of their business. Right? Supply chain and demand prediction is like the very core of retail. But still, when they are doing promo campaigns, promo offers, they have a huge problem with predicting demand. Because the whole idea of this promo offer is that they are unique. Right? Today we are offering some special price to yogurts, and tomorrow we are selling, I don't know, some soap or whatever. So we cannot just say, oh, that's how it usually is, so probably that's how much we need to buy. And this is a problem, because it actually creates huge conflict between marketing people and supply chain people within, within retail. Because of course, if you cannot predict it properly, what happens is that either you have too much of stock and it's just not being sold, because you hoped that your campaign went well, but didn't really, and of course people 
who are responsible for stocks and warehouses hating those marketing guys who didn't deliver, or vice versa. If the marketing guys were successful, but supply chain guys were conservative, then you ran out of the stock, and you are basically advertising it, but you cannot sell it. So it's, again, a very sad thing. But it seems that if you put AI into the job and make it to think about it, you can be as accurate as, well, as it shows here. It's actually it's an incredible number. This 61 is pretty much irrelevant, because you do not need to count your stock up to one item. What you need to know is how much wholesale packages to order. And 87% cases we have this prediction accurate within one package. Basically, we told them exactly how much you need to order to make sure that your uh, promo campaign is uh, covered with the stock, but you do not have it um, unsold. So that's something that AI can do for you. Just one more example where, again, you can use AI because it can consider so much more factors. And in this case, it's direct automation, right? For retail, it was more like advisory to the human. But here, it's basically more than a thousand of humans, sorry to say that, but they actually lost their jobs, right? Because uh, in this uh, online uh, dating service, they used human moderators to make sure that the photos you upload for your profile, they are like, compliant with the rules. They do not contain anything obscene, they do not contain, contain anything relevant, they actually contain the face of the person, and it's probably your face. And the last part, of course, is the trickiest one. How do we know that it's your face, right? So in one part, just filtering something which we don't want to see on our servers, some obscene uh, content, it's just about AI being as good as humans. That's enough. But now, if we want to guess if it's your picture or not, it becomes more tricky. How do we do that? Right? And what we could use is, well, first of all, we can use predictory, um, we can use AI-based predictions. And second, we can use index, web index we have. We, as Yandex, we just know all the pictures which are published around in the web. So what we can actually do is we can say, oh, you know what? It's probably not your photo because it's Brad Pitt. Because we know that, right? And this, um, Pakistani guy who was doing this before could just not know it, right? So this is how it works. If you want to use the, your data properly, consider this. It's not just for insights. Actually, I'm usually saying forget about insights. Forget about insights, because you don't really know what kind of insights you're looking for until you optimize that side, operational side, until you actually have your efficiency at the top level. And what you need to do for that, and I'm sure that if you think about your own business, you can easily come up with, like, maybe not a dozen, but at least two, three examples of routine decisions being made day to day, where you have this repetitive process, where you have some uncertainty in inputs, and very specific KPIs to improve. All this kind of job will be dedicated to AI, and it's better if you start now. Because my favorite part about AI is not how great it is in terms of future. It will change our future, I'm sure of that. Well, in fact, it's just very likely, but I'm quite sure of that. It will change our world in a decade. But what I love about it most is that if you know where to look and you know where to apply, you can actually get value out of it today, within a few months, in a very simple implementation project. And I hope that I kind of helped you to recognize those situations where you could do that. Thank you very much.